Hello and welcome to Saturday Agenda. I'm Peter Van Onselen. Well, usually Budget Week, which is what we're in at the moment, is dominated by exactly that, the budget. But the political lexicon this week is dominated by a range of issues. We started, obviously, with this so-called Malaysian solution. We then had the budget on Tuesday and we had, of course, Tony Abbott's budget in reply, if you could call it that, on Thursday and yesterday... We, of course, had this new population strategy by the government again. Strategy, if you could call it that. These are the issues we're going to be talking about with our panel. I'm joined here in Sydney on the far end of the panel by Paul Hunya, as Morning, we are Peter. all weeks. Good to see you, mate. And closest to me, Dr Gregor Maney, thanks for your company as well. Pleasure, Pete. Morning. And for the first segment, joining us out of Perth to discuss the budget specifically, we're joined by the Shadow Assistant Treasurer, Matthias Corman. Mr Corman, thanks for your company. Good morning, Peter. Um, I'll come to you straight away, if I can, Senator. Um, the budget reply by Tony Abbott, was it a deliberate strategy to make sure that there wasn't really much new in it, but rather it was a bit of an overarching critique of the government and a cry for a new election? Well, Tony Abbott presented a positive plan for Australia on Thursday night. It was a plan to uh, help ease uh, cost of living pressures for families across Australia. It was a plan to restore good government. Uh, what Tony Abbott demonstrated on uh, Thursday night was that the coalition uh, has a comprehensive set of policies uh, in place and it has, of course, a strong alternative t uh, team that stands ready to take responsibility and provide good government for Australia. All right, let, let, let me just get down to some specifics, though, if I can, Senator. I'm really interested in this concept of middle class welfare, this idea of what constitutes being rich. Now, the Labor Party are using the $150,000 mark for families as, as a point at which means testing comes in, at which uh, the removal of benefits happens. <clears throat> I'm wondering, as a Liberal, how you can well, oppose that, that, is not right, by that the way. sort of situation. Well, well, tell me this, though. Middle class welfare or, or assistance packages are going to people earning more than $150,000 or families that earn more than that. The modelling suggests that that's only 15% of households. Why do the top 15% of households receive welfare from the state? Well, what you call middle class welfare, we of course uh, call tax breaks for families. And, and I mean, the point to make, to make here is that more, more than two million families across Australia who receive family tax benefits uh, will be hurt uh, by this particular uh, budget measure, by this particular $2 billion cut. Uh, this, this is, I mean, don't believe the Labor Party spin that this is just uh, the top 15% of, of families. It's just not true. And, and I mean, I guess the point, the point to make here so is that we've had three or four. Well, Senator, if I could just jump in there. So, so you, you disagree with Malcolm Turnbull when he says that it's absolutely crucial for the coalition if it takes the reins of government to get middle class Australia off welfare? We, we, we've got a very strong plan which is uh, focused on uh, easing cost of living pressures and Tony Abbott of course on Thursday put a very comprehensive plan in place and, and, and just to respond to uh, Peter's question uh, earlier, I mean th this is, uh, if, if, you look at, if you look at this $2 billion assault on families across Australia and you put that against the $1.75 billion blowout uh, in the cost of managing illegal boat arrivals uh, because Labor decided to dismantle a very successful and strong uh, border protection policy back in August 2008, you really can see the completely misguided uh, budget priorities of this government. Well, that's all fair enough, but I, I guess the issue, though, Senator, is like it or not, and, and, and I, I can accept the criticism about the, the, the cost blowout attached to asylum seekers. I can accept the criticism. And that's just one of them. I, and I can accept the criticism that, uh, that, that there are many more areas that could be cut in the budget, but I'm just trying to get to the bottom of, of why we are giving welfare to the top 15% income earning families. Now, that's not Labor spin, that's independent modelling by analysts that have been quoted all week uh, since we've seen the budget. Now, I'm just wondering why a Liberal government would continue those sort of things. It's the same criticism that the Howard government received from the right, from institutions like the Institute of Public Affairs. This isn't a Labor spin. The Labor Party is proposing to freeze uh, family tax benefits for all uh, Australians uh, that are receiving uh, uh, family tax benefits, uh, earning as little as $45,000. I mean, the Labor Party is trying to divert attention from that, but that is, that is a fact. Now, I mean, the reality is this. I mean, the Labor Party is into class warfare. Uh, the, the Labor Party is against uh, Australians trying to get ahead. Uh, we, are, we are in favour of encouraging people uh, to, to get ahead. We are, we are all about encouraging people to, uh, you know... Uh, 
uh, reach their full potential, whereas the Labour Party is all about penalising su success, penalising uh, people uh, that have the aspiration of getting ahead. So, Senator, you, given that uh, essentially someone has to be worse off uh, when you're taking a budget from a position of massive deficit and transitioning it towards surplus, and as Greg pointed out earlier, Turnbull has also mentioned that there needs to be something done about middle class welfare, what cuts are you proposing that will impact families, if not these? Well, we think that the government should have been uh, tougher on itself. It should have been tougher on waste and mismanagement right across all areas of government. Uh, we, as you know, we presented a comprehensive list of uh, budget savings in the lead-up to the last election, $50 billion worth of savings, in fact. And, I mean, some of those savings have found their way into, into the government's budget, and we welcome that. Uh, but, um, I mean, <laughs> this, this proposition that somehow uh, we have to uh, present a complete alternative budget out of opposition is, is just like party spin. The Labour Party never did that in opposition. I mean, Wayne Swan never delivered a full budget No, he, uh, he didn't, opposition. Senator, but I recall Peter Costello being mightily critical of that for, for year and year after year as part of the Howard government. But let's go to a specific that, that, that I'd like to get your view on. There was a lot of uh, satire and comedy in, in Tony Abbott's speech about the set-top box plan. I think it's $350 uh, that is going to be given to, to, each, uh, to each pensioner and, and some people on DSP as well. He called it the building the entertainment revolution. Uh, the House roared in laughter. I have to confess I did the same when I was watching it on the television. But my question for you is this. Are you in agreement with that money going to pensioners and so forth for the digital transfer or would you do things differently? Well, I mean, this government is very bad at uh, spending money. Like, I mean, we've seen it with the pink bats. We've seen it with the overpriced school halls. I mean, why is it the role of government to, to go out there and buy set-top boxes and organise for them to be installed? I mean, if, so if you, you deny if you that money provide, for pensioners? Well, well I, mean, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's just not, that's not, that wasn't your question. This, this, is, this is about whether this is an effective way of doing it. I mean, quite frankly, uh, people who had, if people had the money in their pocket themselves, they would probably be able to make their own choices much better uh, than the government uh, making them for them. And they would probably get much better value for money if, if they made their own decision. You're preempting my opinion piece tomorrow, I have to say, Senator, because well, well, I, 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 I agree I, with I'm that I'm sorry argument. about that. I'm not meaning, I'm not meaning to preempt anything, but the point here is, you know, when you can buy a whole new television for less than $200, you know, why, why would the government go out and try and uh, buy the set-top boxes, contract uh, somebody <laughs> to go and install them? I mean, how inefficient is that to organise a lot of Canberra? How, how about letting people make their own decision on how they want to I mean, if people end up with more money in their own pocket because there's less taxes and less government waste I and mean, that's the way to do it surely well, I'm going to let my panel hold you to account on that one because I find it hard to argue against it Senator it sounds like uh, you're working on a, a set speech that you'll be delivering non-stop for the next two or three weeks but the, the, the question I well, have I mean, but this government, doesn't le this government doesn't learn from its mistake, mistakes I mean we've had it with the pink bats we've had it with the overpriced school halls and here they're at it again I but, mean but, surely so, so, I mean Senator, surely they're going to learn from their mistakes can, one day. Can I make one point? At the beginning of this year, Tony Abbott said the one thing he wanted his party to do, he said he's learned from his mistakes of the last year. He had a good year, but there were some mistakes. And the big one was that you guys weren't being constructive enough. There was too much focus on the negatives. Do you find it bizarre, as Shadow Treasurer, that you're on sort of a few days after the, the budget in reply, and you are talking about pink bats, etc. Isn't that doing the absolute opposite of what he pledged well, to do, which is actually well, getting constructive well, well, and putting some on. new policies on the table? Well, well, hang on. Like, I mean, Tony Abbott on Thursday provided a, uh, provided a very positive plan. He, he, he outlined more than uh, 20 odd uh, initiatives and How things many of those that we were doing government though, to Senator? restore. Well, well, well let's, let, let me just answer the question for a moment. So he, he presented a very positive plan. What have we had from the government uh, over the last uh, 24 hours? We've, I mean, Julia Gillard and Wayne Swan have so little to say about their own budget. They're so weak and so directionless that all they've been doing is that they've been getting stuck into Tony Abbott. In fact, most of this week, the government has actually been focused on what Tony Abbott was and wasn't doing rather than to tell us what it is that they were doing or what was in the budget. So, so I mean, I don't think that we have to get any lessons from anyone uh, about being negative. We, we've put forward a very positive plan. Uh, we've, we've told the Australian people what we would that, Senator, and what the, we wouldn't do. The overarching effect of the speech the other night was a, a leader of the opposition calling for the collapse of a government. You described that as positive policy development. Well, 
Well, well, I mean, let's, let's just look at some of the things that uh, Tony Abbott has provided leadership on in, in uh, recent months. I mean, he has put mental health on the agenda. He's put workforce participation on the agenda. He's put economic development uh, in Aboriginal communities in the north on the agenda. And, and all of these issues the government uh, has been playing catch-up on. Uh, I mean, we, we'd like to think that they came on board with us in terms of um, dealing with uh, the uh, Wild Rivers legislation in the Parliament uh, sometime in the near future. But, like, I mean, this mental health, because workforce participation, these are that. all issues that Tony Abbott has put on the agenda and the government is playing catch-up. Specifically on mental health, Senator, I completely agree with you that it was, it was astonishing that wasn't an issue during the, the massive health debate we had a year and a half ago. You guys did put that on, on, on the agenda. Are you now happy with the government policy that was announced the other night? Well, we are, we are happy that the government is putting more money into uh, mental health. But let's just, I mean, you've you got you to look at the detail, though, and, and it all is not as it seems with uh, the government's mental health package. I mean, firstly, the government is actually cutting $400 million out of services for those Australians who access mental health services through their family doctor. Uh, and, and also, like, I mean, whereas the budget is over four years, the mental health funding announcement that they put into the headline spin uh, is over five years. So a lot of that is towards, towards the end of the year. If, if you scale it all back, uh, there's essentially $500 million worth of new money. If you get rid of the rebadging, if you, get, if, if you sort of leave out uh, the stuff that is beyond the forward estimates, and if you take account of uh, the money that's actually being cut, it's about half a billion dollars. So, but I mean, having said all of that, we, we are pleased to see that the government has uh, taken on board our suggestions that mental health is an area that needs uh, more investment. Senator, before we let you go, can, can I move on to the government's population strategy that it discussed yesterday? Uh, you're a West Australian Senator, it's obviously a boom state, even though the Premier doesn't like the use of the word boom. Uh, there's a lot of investment going on there. There is a lot of regionally required labour and, and, and infrastructure. Are you happy with the, uh, the population strategy that Tony Burke laid out yesterday, which I guess included um, no target, of course, but nevertheless the recognition of skilled migration requirements in particular regional cohorts? Look, I mean, obviously there is a significant demand for uh, labour, and in particular skilled labour, in places like Western Australia. And there's a range of things we've got to do. We've got to make sure uh, that we better match up uh, those Australians looking for work, in particular long-term unemployed, with, with those uh, businesses and those uh, uh, projects looking for workers. We've got to make sure we get our training effort right in Australia, and we've got to make sure uh, that we've got the right uh, immigration mix and the right focus on skilled migration. Uh, what is important in all of that, of course, is to get get the balance right between those three uh, elements and, and, and no doubt in the, in the next few days uh, Scott Morrison, our shadow minister of, in this area, will have more to say about it. Well his first response in, to this was to start talking Scott about Morris. boat people which I thought was, was not sort of a, a I guess a positive uh, view about the whole population debate. But, but can I move yeah. on to the front page? Well, of we the... understand the government doesn't want to talk about boat people because that is one of their many areas of incompetence and mismanagement but, that but they don't Senator, want to talk about. But Senator, isn't on some of it a little disingenuous? In the context of a country, one of the wealthiest countries on earth, it's, the, it's budget week. How much talk have you guys given to the $1 billion blowout on boat people? In the, in the scheme of our national $1. budget... $1.7 billion $1. blowout. 1.7 yeah. Senator. In the scheme of, say, a mining tax that was removed and maybe cost us 60 to $90 billion, that's barely moving the needle. Isn't it just extraordinary the way you guys are able to constantly use this issue, even in fiscal debates now, as a sort of anchor for, for your own policy? Well, well, I mean, but the thing is, I mean, like, like let's, what, what would Kevin Rudd say? Fair shake of the sauce bottle here. Like, I mean, the last year of the Howard government, we spent $100 million on managing illegal boat arrivals. Now, uh, next year, it's going to be more than a billion. So in, in about four years, it has increased tenfold. And you're expecting us not to point to that. And, and when you've got a circumstance where just under $2 billion uh, has been the blowout in managing illegal arrivals because of the government's incompetence, and you put that against a, a $2 billion assault on families where, where they're being asked to pay the price for the incompetence Senator, and you don't expect yeah. us to talk about it? Senator, Greg's point is there's $36 billion on the table for infrastructure. That's about 36 times this spend that you're complaining about for boat arrivals and yet we haven't heard one iota of talk on infrastructure, well, your positive plan for the future on that. I, I would suggest that, you know, with due respect, you start telling us a bit more about your alternative plan on filling the infrastructure gap in Australia rather than wasting well, the airwaves on this, on, on this one well, issue constantly. Well, 
I, 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 was, I was in uh, New South Wales yesterday, and, and, and of course in New South Wales, the uh, then Labor state government for 16 years kept talking about infrastructure, but uh, uh, as many commentators were saying there yesterday, didn't deliver much at all. And, and of course at the federal level, uh, federal level, Labor is exactly the same. They talk about these things, but they don't actually deliver on them. So, I mean, what, what you'll see from the coalition, we, we've already put a, a significant number of policies on the table. We will, of course, continue to do that as we uh, go forward to the next election and, and people across Australia will have a very clear understanding as to what our plans are when it comes to better infrastructure. Okay, Senator, one final question before I let you go. I uh, appreciate your time on Saturday Agenda, but Front Page of the Australian today talks about uh, the Pilbara perhaps becoming a mini Dubai and there's some push for that. As a West Australian Senator, would you like to see the Pilbara become a mini Dubai? Well, look, I mean, the growth and the uh, development in Karatha is very exciting. I mean, there's, there's many, uh, you know, world, uh, world class and, uh, you know, uh, th there's very significant projects that are developing in, in, in Karatha. And, of course, we've got to make sure uh, that all of the social and community infrastructure keeps up uh, with uh, the level of economic development. So, I mean, I think it's a very exciting time for, for uh, the Pilbara. It's a very exciting time for Karatha. And it's a very exciting time for Australia and Western Australia in that respect. So, was that a yes or was that I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm not sure whether I would say, like, well, I mean, the, the reality is this. I, I want the Pilbara to become, uh, you know, the, the best the Pilbara can be. I'm not sure that I want to put a Dubai tag on it, but I mean, <laughs> it's certainly... Eh? I'm not sure Dubai is a compliment. I agree with you. All right. Well, we're not, we're not going to get a yes or a no, but you want to see development well, in the Pilbara. I appreciate that. No worries. Okay. Senator uh, Matthias Corman, we appreciate your company. Thanks for joining us on Saturday Agenda. Good to be here. When we come back from the break, we'll specifically look which...